This whole thing started around a year ago. Uh, I tried to post it back then, but got rejected because it was a wall of text and I was too busy to fix it at the time. I was only reminded of it when last week, the first occurrence in several months reminded me of the entire thing, and of course, now I'll be sharing it with you all. I live in a ranch-style home in the middle of Missouri, on 1.8 acres of nothing but woods. We bought the house almost two years ago. The house was vacant for about eight months before we purchased it, and the realtors had problems with squatters about three months into the house being for sale, but said nothing had happened since. My elderly grandmother lives with me, as I'm her caregiver. It's just the two of us and our dogs. We moved into the house in early October of 2016, and the first incident occurred on March of 2017. We started seeing a bunch of plastic bags and trash around the back of our house, further out than either of us go. We didn't think much of it, but did make a mental note that raccoons or something could be getting into our trash. I put some bungee cords on the cans to hold the lids down, and wrote it off at that. One night I was coming home much later than normal, at around 1.30am. All of the land is fenced in, but there is one back gate. Near the back gate, I could see trees rustling. There's a lot of wildlife in our area, so I assumed that's what it was, but I got a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach and decided I should go check it out. The ground was dry enough that I was able to drive through the yard in my car with the doors locked. I shone my headlights on the trees, and a man came running out of them. If that wasn't terrifying enough, he ran straight for the gate, as if he knew exactly where it was, opened it, and left. I was absolutely terrified, so I called my dad who lives in the area. He explained to me how large the population of homeless people is in our area, and that he'd be over the next day to put a lock on the gate. About two weeks after the first incident, I was letting my dogs outside. One had already gone inside, and the other was playing hard to get as usual. I began calling out her name. It wasn't even dark outside yet. After about three calls, another voice, distinctly male, started calling out her name as well. She began barking aggressively and running for the house. I was freaked out, but again let my family talk me out of making a call to the authorities. About a month passes. My grandmother has a habit of forgetting to close the garage door behind her. Around 11 p.m., our neighbor from across the street knocks on our door. He says he was outside smoking when he saw two men standing in our garage talking. He said as soon as he started walking over, they ran off. What scares me the most about this event is that they stole nothing, and there was plenty to steal from. We have a brand new refrigerator, a leaf blower, power tools, and my grandma leaves the keys in the car. They were just standing there talking the whole time. This time I called the police, and they told me in the nicest way possible that they couldn't do shit. There was another incident to call them, and to not scare the men away. The final incident of 2017 happened probably three months after the prior one. We have a sun porch attached to the outside of the house. The door connects to the kitchen, and the outside door to the deck. I don't know if I explained that right, and if anyone wants, I can send some pictures. Basically, we left for several hours to go grocery shopping. We came home. When we came home, all of our deck furniture was stacked on top of each other, and the screen ripped off the sun porch door. I called the non-emergency hotline from my area, and again they said with no idea who these people were that nothing could be done. About two weeks ago now, we had our white vinyl fence power washed. Because the fence is quite old, a post came off of the fence, and the company that power washed the fence didn't know how to fix it. We didn't blame them, so they had no reason to. We left the post in the front yard, but up against the fence. We came home a few days later, and the post was nailed back up with a smiley face sticking out attached to it. This very easily could have been a kind neighbor, but I was immediately spooked because of the prior events. Cut to Saturday of last week. 
My grandmother is able to drive again, but doesn't have her own car. I'm busy working around the house, so she decides to take herself to the doctor. My grandmother leaves the house through our door connected to the garage, and I lock it behind her. It never dawns on me to check to make sure she closed it. About twenty minutes after she leaves, someone starts heavily banging on the door. When I say banging, I mean it sounds like the SWAT team. Someone was putting all their force into banging on that door. My dogs are going nuts, and I don't know what to think. I start to think maybe my grandmother left something and is trying to get my attention, but the little voice in the back of my head stops me and tells me, there's no way that little old lady is banging on the door that hard. Suddenly the banging stops, and I hear a deep and again distinctly male laugh. I grab the baseball bat out of my bedroom and lock myself in the bathroom with the dogs. I realize I've left my phone outside the bathroom, but I was too afraid to go out of the bathroom and get it. I took the lid off the tank of the toilet, so now I had two weapons. Nothing happened, and I hid in that bathroom until my grandma was home again. So that's the story, I guess. I know there wasn't some big confrontation or climax, but I fear the story may not be over yet. I don't know if any of these events are connected at all, but I've got it in my head that they are and I'm driving myself nuts to a point where I'm afraid to be alone in my own house. The only reason I even included the fence is because there hasn't been a single sketchy thing happening in all of 2018, and then someone fixes the fence, and less than a week later another scary encounter. I honestly don't know what to think. I'll update if anything else happens. So whether this is one or multiple people, I hope whatever this is, is over. I'd like to share with you a series of horrific events from my childhood that we never really had a resolution to. There were some suspects, but no one was ever brought to justice. Also, there have been a lot of terrible things happening on my mom's property. That's another story, but here is part of the beginning. This part of the story happened roughly around 1990, during my summer break from school, but continued on for quite some time. I must have been about second or third grade age. I grew up with just my mom. My dad was never in the picture, so we lived alone until I was about twelve, when she remarried. Our secluded country neighborhood was safe for the most part, and all of our immediate neighbors were elderly, save for one couple who had a few young adult sons around my brother's age. For the most part, though, we didn't have much riffraff in the area. At first, there were only minor clues to indicate something was going on, such as things being moved in the backyard, and I guess because my mother has always been a paranoid conspiracy theorist, she had an idea that something was happening. I didn't really know this until I heard her talking about it much later after the events. She tried to hide things during the time so they wouldn't scare me. She even started sleeping in my room with me at night, probably because she was paranoid but I assumed it was because we could stay up late and watch movies together and eat snacks. One morning after I got up, I noticed that our old wooden back door had huge chunks missing out of it, around the part where the lock and bolt goes into the door frame. It was as if someone was trying to chip away at the locked part. I showed my mom what I had discovered, not realizing why the door was damaged, and she went completely silent, pale-faced and panicked. I could tell that something was wrong, but I was too young to understand that someone had apparently tried to break in, either in the night or while we were out. That day, she mended the door to the best of her ability, and if I remember correctly, she even put a new and different lock on it from the hardware store. She also filed a police report, but there was nothing they could do. Now, I had a German shepherd named Munchie. He was a big, spoiled baby who loved raiding the fridge with me, but to a stranger he was probably very intimidating. He was my best friend and very watchful over me, and I still miss him to this day. For a week or two after Mom and I would go to bed, Munchie would start pacing and whining and acting very anxious. 
Since we lived in such a rural area with no imminent danger, we thought, Mom would frequently let him outside by himself. So one night, when he was acting exceptionally strange, she let him outside alone. We didn't have central air because our house was old, being built in the 50s. We were poor, and Kentucky summers weren't really too hot anyway. At night, my mom would open up all the windows in the house, with the halfway burglar latch, of course. Since she was in my room with me, watching a movie, we had both my bedroom windows all the way up. My back window overlooked a bit of a hill, which gradually sloped into a low, wide bottom. The bottom was full of tall weeds and bushes. Suddenly... We heard movement in the brush of the bottom. Muncie. Then we heard him snarling like a werewolf. Mom got up and ran to the window, but couldn't see anything in the darkness. What we heard next was horrifying. It sounded as if Munchie was attacking someone. He was making those awful noises, as if he was eating someone alive. I began to cry, terrified that something would happen to my best friend and my mom started screaming in horror for Munchie to come home. We heard what sounded like someone escaping from my dog's wrath and taking off through the brush. My mom ran to the back door with me right behind her and called for Munchie at the top of her lungs until he came running back into the house. He was panting, grunting, and all bristled up. I hugged him so tight I'd probably nearly squeezed life out of him. As time progressed, though, things started to get worse. Being so young, I didn't know for a long time, but my mom was safeguarding the house. She even moved a tall dresser in front of my window that overlooked the hill on the bottom. She tried her best, but whoever was harassing us was finding new ways to make our life hell, or maybe try to kill us. One night, she said she heard peculiar noises coming from the backyard. I don't necessarily remember this event so I called her for details before writing this. The sounds were coming from under the dining room windows, which overlooked the backyard. She turned on the security light on the back of the house, and saw a ladder propped up against the back of our house, as if someone were trying to climb in through our windows. The incident seemed more like an empty threat than a real attempt, especially considering the back door was probably easier access. We don't know if the person thought the windows would be unlocked or what, but for whatever reason, they gave it a try. Again, she called our local police, and they did nothing. I should probably note that we didn't have a very big law enforcement force there. You probably wouldn't believe me if I tried to tell you how worthless law enforcement was, and still is, in that area. On another occasion, and this memory is burned into my brain because it scared me so bad, Someone snuck up to my bedroom window one night. My mom had drifted off quietly to sleep, but I was watching the rest of Willy Wonka. I was looking in the direction of my ominous window, the one overlooking the bottom, and I ended up getting a good look at this big white hand, which reached up and slapped my window screen multiple times in rapid succession. I screamed, my mom woke up, and the tormentor took off, no doubt through the brushy bottom. My mom is a dog person. She adores dogs and has always had lots of dogs and puppies around. We had seven little black pups and a mother dog around this time, and they lived outside on our huge property, had plenty of space to play, and a nice big dog house. At some point, around the same time this stuff was happening, we had to be out of town for a few days. My mom had some people watching the house, and I guess she didn't really think anything horrendous would happen. Then again, she wasn't aware of how far this thing would go. When we came home, Mom's puppies had been killed and lined up in a row in the side yard, close to my window that overlooked the bottom. This was devastating. The police did little to help, which included telling her how short to saw off her shotgun so that it was still legal, and advising us to keep Munchie within the home. I forgot to ask but I'm nearly positive my mom ended up sending the mommy dog away to my sister's house on the other side of town. Months later, incidents were still increasing in occurrence, and then someone decided to take it way too far. Something hit against the back of the house in the wee hours of the morning. Mom looked out the windows and saw nothing, at least not until the next morning. 
she found a stick with a charred pine knot in it. Apparently someone had lit it on fire and threw it at our house. I assume they were hoping our house would catch fire and burn. And don't even ask about the cops, because they did nothing yet again. I wouldn't be surprised if they even knew who the culprit was and didn't care. Then one day, Munchie went missing. He had gone out to the bathroom in the evening before bed, but he didn't come back immediately like always. He vanished. I don't even want to go into detail about this because it breaks my heart all over again, but we found him days later. He had been poisoned. To be completely honest, I could keep going with this story, although it takes a lot of unbelievable turns. Not all of them are horrifying. Some are just ridiculous. Then around 2009, a multiple year long court case began when my mom had to fight a group of her neighbors in court to keep them from stealing their property. And those events led us to believe the people involved with that case may have had something to do with the torment we experienced. But honestly, all we can do is assume. To give some context before I tell my story, I'm a 28-year-old married woman. I live in a major city with a somewhat established and successful career I run from home. It involves several medium art forms that get messy, so due to my daytime responsibilities, I work outside a lot at night. I live right next to a gas station. The entirety of my property is wrapped in a privacy fence except the very front. And I'm in a decent neighborhood, but kind of on the fringe. So the story starts in mid-March this year. Once in a great while, I'll walk to the bar diagonal from my house. It's a nice little place. Great regulars, all older and not gross. I can go in and drink and talk, and never have to worry about them hitting on me or being weird. So it's a Friday night around 9.30. I walk over to the bar to have a few drinks. I'm not a super jumpy person, but I'm always cautious and aware of my surroundings. When I left the bar, the first thing I noticed was a very tall man across the street under a street lamp, his face and body obscured by a ball cap and hoodie. Now, I'm usually under the assumption that someone hanging under a light is waiting to do a drug deal, and that's the thing to do around here. So I just casually glanced at him every minute or so as I walked. It was less than a two minute walk from the bar to my house. I can see my house from the bar, so nothing super treacherous could happen, right? I had gotten to the spot on the road I cross at, and I glance at the man because I can feel him staring me down. But I'm not going to give him any reason to sense any nervousness or fear, so I just keep walking. As soon as I get to the same side of the road he's on, he starts catcalling me. Hey girl, come here, let's talk. Don't ignore me, baby. I just want to talk. Quit walking away so fast. I didn't respond, and he started walking towards me, cutting through the gas station parking lot diagonally. Luckily, once I passed my fence, he couldn't see me anymore, and I ran up my steps and got inside and locked up. He came to the edge of the fence, and then walked back to where he was standing. I was a bit shaken up, but I let it go and went to bed. Weeks pass and I'm still cautious, but I still go to the bar every once in a while. No sign of him. Fast forward to the weekend before last. I walked over on a Saturday night at around 10ish. The first thing I notice as I pass my fence walking to the bar is a man standing under the lamp again. He didn't seem to notice me at first, not until I crossed onto the opposite side. I could feel him staring at me. There were no calls, no movement other than his face following me silently as I walked. I didn't fret over it too much, as I planned to be at the bar for about two hours. So I have my drinks, chat with my buddies, all is well. As I go to leave, the man pops back into my head, and I decided if he was still there I'd have the bartender walk out with me and watch me walk home. He's a sweetheart like that and always offers. I usually decline, as usually I don't feel unsafe. I step down and do a 360 visual sweep. No weirdo under the light, and off in the distance was someone walking towards the bar, but they were a full block away. I couldn't even make anything out about the person, so I figured, whatever, I'm just gonna go ahead and walk home. 
but just for the sake of common sense, I'll turn around and keep an eye. I wasn't feeling threatened, as they were pretty far and my house is only half a block away. As I'm walking though, I start to get this weird feeling, so I turn and check the location of the strange unidentifiable person, and they've covered half a block already in about ten seconds. I'm unsure now if they just walk super fast, or if they were running when I wasn't looking. And this weird little tension gets thicker, until I'm basically staring behind myself at them as I walk. By the time I get to my crossing point, they'd already gotten to the bar entrance. They'd covered a full block in less than 20 seconds, and I'd gotten half a block in that time. As they passed in front of the bar, the light lit up their face and it was the same man who had been under the lamp earlier that evening. I was worried now, because I was trapped between my house and the bar, but unable to go back to the bar as the man was in front of it, so my only real option was to finish walking home. Now if I had any doubt about the situation, and thought maybe I was being paranoid, it was completely erased by what transpired next. As soon as I started crossing the street, so did he. He stepped off of the sidewalk, and started making a diagonal beeline straight for me. I started walking faster, but not fast enough to lead him to chase. He got to the gas station parking lot, which I was halfway past at this point, and walked diagonal straight through it, right to me. As soon as I got around my fence, I bolted and started banging on my door. My husband was home, so he opened the door, and I told him what had happened. We stood there, seeing out the door window. As he walked past my house, he stared through the window at us. It was my first time fully seeing his face. Now still, the possibility that he lived around there, and I was just really paranoid, was there in my mind a little bit. That was completely stomped out by his next move, which was to walk two more houses down from mine, turn around, walk back by my house staring in the window at me again, and walk down the main road out of sight. The bar isn't a concern. As stated, my bartender will gladly watch me walk home, and the regulars often offer to walk me home as well. My biggest concern is now he knows where I live, and I'm terrified of being outside at night alone when I'm trying to work. This happened during the winter of my junior year of college, a little less than ten years ago. It was about 4 p.m., still light out, and I was totally bundled up from the Wisconsin cold, looking more like a marshmallow than a girl as I carefully stepped along some poorly shoveled sidewalks. Just as I was about to cross the street onto campus, a passing car haunted me. Now it's important to know that my school was in a smallish town in central Wisconsin, and when the school was in session, the town's population doubles, so it was a safe assumption, or so I thought that the honker was someone I knew from school. That's why, even though I couldn't see the driver and didn't recognize the gray car, I waved hello. That and the compulsion for a good Midwesterner is to always be friendly. Don't worry. This situation in six plus years as a New York City resident has driven this out of me. Immediately after I waved, the car takes a sharp turn to enter the gas station situated right behind where I'm waiting for the crossing light. The car stops at the pump about a hundred feet directly behind my back, but nobody gets out. It honks again. I turn around and, squinting through the glare on the front of the windshield from the low sun, I see a man I've never met before. I start to get a bit of an uneasy feeling. He honks again. I turn around trying to ignore him and face the crosswalk. He honks again, more urgently as the light changes and I hustle across the street. I am now on campus, walking on the right side of the sidewalk. To my left across the street is the gym and all of the dorms where I'm headed, and to my right is the academic buildings. If you've never lived in a small town during a really cold winter, I don't know if I can properly describe to you how quiet the snow makes things and how empty of people the streets can be. It was a Sunday afternoon, Absolutely no one but me was outside walking, when the car with this strange man who wouldn't stop honking at me pulled up beside me. 
He rolled down his window and spoke in an accent I couldn't quite place. Cold one today. You need a ride home? The Midwest nice strikes again, even though I'm already thoroughly creeped out by this guy. And I reply, Oh no, thank you, but it's not so bad. I live just over there anyway. I gesture broadly to where the dorms are, careful not to be specific. Get in the car. I'll drive you the rest of the way. He reaches over and opens the passenger door. No, really, I'm fine. Thank you. Get in the fucking car! Out of nowhere, he just yells with this rage directed right at me. His eyes looked so angry and hateful that it turned my stomach to ice. I straight up booked it towards the academic buildings, since to run home would mean crossing the street in front of his car. You know those dreams where you're running from something, but you aren't really going anywhere fast? That's kind of what it was like to run on icy sidewalks and snow boots. As I'm running, trying not to slip on the ice, and weighed down by my boots, I hear a door behind me slam shut. In my gut, I know he's behind me, but I refuse to look back, concentrating on each step so I don't fall. I reached the first building I could get to, and it was seemingly empty. I ran to one of the campus phones. I was an RA, so I actually knew the numbers, and I wasn't really a cell phone user yet, much to my boyfriend's annoyance, and called my boyfriend's room. He didn't pick up. Luckily, though, a moment later, one of my residents happened to walk by. I told her what happened, and we walked back to the dorm together, with no sign of the man having been there at all. That night, I talked to the police about what had happened, even though I was really unsure about calling them since all I knew for sure was that this stranger yelled at me. Still, my boyfriend convinced me that I should. It wasn't really helpful, honestly. I couldn't give them much more than a vague description of the man and the color of the car. Nothing ever really came of it. But sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I had been stupid enough to accept the ride, and whether or not he was targeting me personally, or if he only came after me because I waved.